First, it provides an accountability mechanism that will drive us to continue enhancing our public engagement work on open data. All members of the Charter must maintain their membership by demonstrating continuous progress towards implementing the principles of the Charter. So the Charter joins us to a network of like-minded governments around the world that want to pool knowledge and expertise on open data. It allows us to build on what we have already accomplished by allowing us to learn from one another. Hearing from our companion governments what has worked well, how they have overcome obstacles, and what problems we should avoid because there's never any point in inventing the wheel twice. The Charter will guide us in setting common data standards across member jurisdictions, making our data available in a way that is interoperable with data from other governments. So through this commitment, hopefully we will get to the point where municipal, provincial, and federal data within Canada will be able to be combined, manipulated, and compared. So the Charter embodies our commitment to working together with you to make open data even better. The commitment began with a foundational directive called the Open Data Directive. And notably, this directive, which has been in place for over a year now, ensures Ontario's data is open by default. Doesn't obviously mean all data is open because we have lots of, you can imagine that many of the data sets held by the Ontario government, personal health data, personal education records, personal loan records, um, I can go on and on, that there's a lot of personal data that is held by the Ontario government and of course that continues to be um, overseen by our privacy legislation. But it does mean that where you don't have privacy considerations or other considerations, that data should be open by default. So I'm proud to say that Ontario was the first jurisdiction in Canada to have consulted the public on a draft of the Open Data Directive using online consultations, social media, and in-person sessions. And in fact, the first consultation was done just over two years ago, perhaps maybe exactly two years ago, because it was at the Go Open Data Conference 2015. So you actually helped develop that. So. <laughs> with that directive, we've already opened over 570 data sets, sets which are available in our online data catalog. So this includes data on things like government program budgets and expenditures, traffic volumes on provincial highways, freedom of information statistics, and you can imagine it goes on and on. The catalog is a great, uh, so that's the open data sets. There's also a catalog which is a comprehensive list of data owned or managed by the government of Ontario. So the catalog currently has over 2,000 data sets in it, and they're either obviously open, under review for opening them up, or restricted for privacy reasons, as I've already cited. So I'm proud to say that all Ontario ministries have now contributed to the catalog. And I'm also happy to say that our provincial agencies are doing their part by posting their data inventories on their websites as part of the Open Data Directive. Interestingly, among the biggest users of our open data, are actually other government ministries, which means that we need to ensure that within the Ontario government that our data is interoperable uh, so that we can help to tear down the silos between ministries, among ministries, to ensure that even within the Ontario government, we have a more collective approach to making life better for people by making sure that we have data sets where you can communicate with one another. And believe me, that is a non-trivial issue. Now as we get more open data, Ontario's open data can be used to help solve problems, increase innovation, and foster economic growth in the province. So businesses like Map Your Property, Gridge Watch, 
Gridwatch and Watertap are all using the province's open data. So one of my favorites is Map Your Property because it's such a great example of innovation that is enabled by opening up government data. So what Map Your Property is, is it's an app designed by a you know, startup app designer <coughs> Uh, and it's for engineers, planners, developers, real estate professionals, anyone whose business involves making changes to properties in Ontario. So the way it works is you plug in the location of the property that you're interested in, and the app gives you back something that's sort of like a Google map uh, picture of the place, but it's overlaid with layers and layers of information, the zoning information, the local re re uh, regulations or bylaws the, uh, that would apply, nearby adjustments or applications that are pending that relate to the property. So what you would normally, if you were a, you know, a real estate agent or a developer, you might have somebody who's running around searching out all this information from up to different sources. You can, you can just pull that up. Uh, what I find is if I'm in an audience where there's somebody that's got something to do with real estate, they immediately pull out and start playing. So if you're playing, look for map your property. I think it gives you a couple of freebies to try out. Um, so that's, but that's a great example of something which is commercially useful based on the availability of uh, government data in a form that's easier to access than would have been previously the case. Another great initiative uh, which gets into education more is Ontario's partnership with the University of Toronto Technologies for Knowledge Media Course, which uses our open data. The course challenges students to answer the questions, how can open data be used to improve citizenship engagement? Open data sets from the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sport and the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change were shared with students and ministry staff also engaged one-on-one -on -one with the students providing more details about understanding the details about the data and then evaluating their final projects. So by partnering with U of T we're not just opening data but we're helping students develop data literacy. So those are just a few examples of what we've accomplished already with open data. So what does adopting the charter add to our open data journey? Open data has the power to spur innovation and spark economic growth in Ontario and around the world. McKinsey and company estimate that open data can help generate more than three trillion, trillion with a T every year in key sectors of the global economy. So if Ontario wants to be part of leading in that development and reaping the benefits in terms of jobs and investments here in Ontario, we have to stay on the cutting edge of what other governments around the world are doing with open data. And adopting the International Open Data Charter is critical to that goal. But beyond the economic development, side of open data. There's also the government policy side or the public policy, not necessarily government policy, um, potential to improve lives. Because what open data does is it, it provides citizens who are engaged in public policy development with access to uh, the knowledge that they need, so the access that they have uh, to better data. And that means that more people have access to reliable data, which in turn allows them to have evidence-based policy decisions. And that's very important to me as somebody who actually has a math and computing background, is that we actually form public policy uh, based on good evidence, not just uh, the person who thinks A is louder than the person who thinks B, which is the scary way of making policy. So uh, the other thing, of course, about open data and open government and open dialogue is it actually allows more people to have input into that policy development process. 
But if you're thinking about some of the things that could happen in the future, um, if you were living in London, for example, and you wanted to map your city to show how living near transit influences health outcomes, you need a bunch of different data from a bunch of different levels of government. And if we all adopt open data standards, then you would be able to get federal data, provincial data, municipal data, and put it all together to study what the collective impacts of our policies and whatever is going on in the particular community so that we can put all that information together to figure out what our public policy. Or if you were doing something uh, that is just publicly useful to individual citizens, for example, you develop an app that tells you when your next bus is arriving, and if that app is based on data that follows the common data standards, you've got an app that could be applied in your own city with your own data, but you can take that app and you can play, uh, apply it someplace else that's using a similar data static. And once you've developed that app, it is more generally useful. So there's all sorts of possibilities that are really, really exciting. So where does Ontario fit into your theme of Canada at 150? Marking this milestone is not only about looking back and learning from our past, it's about looking to the future and the possibilities we can create in this province. So maybe, Samir, you can add to your letter that you're writing about, you know, what happens when you open up the letter 40 years from now. An open government is going to be a huge part uh, of that and the work that we're doing together with the open government community with you. The budget, so I look down the road to other possibilities. The budget that we released last week talks about government made simple. The idea that through open digital processes we could make interactions between citizens and government easier and more accessible. And I expect that Deb Matthews, who's going to be here later, will want to talk to you about digital government and that interaction. But one of the really cool things that was in last week's budget document was something called Budget Talks, which was an open government initiative. So I don't know whether any of you were involved, but the way the Budget Talks work was we made a uh, commitment that up to eight projects uh, uh, worth a combined total of $3 billion uh, would go into the budget based on public generation of the ideas. So first of all, the public could submit uh, ideas to the, uh, uh, to the Budget Talks website. Uh, ministries vetted those ideas to find out, uh, A, was it actually possible to do the thing the person said, and was it possible to do it for a million dollars or somewhere in that neighborhood or less because if you submitted a hundred million dollar project this was not quite the way it was supposed to work. So after that had been vetted the things that were viable uh, were reposted and everybody could vote on them. So in fact there ended up being the top three ideas which added up to almost three million dollars which was the allotted budget. The top three ideas, which were included in the budget, was an initiative to reduce and prevent food waste, which actually is a digital project because it's making, it's how do you connect uh, people with excess food, so for a, a, a producer or a grocery store, with people who need food. And I'm for it particularly interested in this because my hometown is Guelph, so agriculture. But I actually know that uh, the computer science students at Guelph have been working on this particular initiative, so I was very happy to see that one. But also, the, the, the second project is improving digital services for rural and northern libraries and finally improving the accessibility of health data. So what's really interesting about those three things that were selected is that in one way or another, 
they actually all collect, connect in one way or another into the open data, the digital government sort of world, and that's what the public selected for the uh, three three initiatives that we'll we'll be going for. In honor of the 150th anniversary of Canada on Ontario, GovLab and the Canadian Open Data Exchange are actually conducting a survey with the goal of finding 150 companies in Canada who are already using open data. So according to this Open Data 150 survey, so far they have found 89 companies across Canada and 65 of them are in Ontario. Yay, Ontario. Thank you.